Saturday, July 16, 2022, and these are your headline stories. Petrol prices to fall as of next Tuesday. On our broadcast tonight, update provided on recovery of Superette owner shot during a robbery in Parham. More details provided on petrol price reductions to take effect this week. Police charge 26-year-old Villa resident over wounding incident. And 10 young Antiguans and Barbudans complete air traffic controller training in the UK. ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico. Local Agents Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. On a Sunday night, I am Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us here on the ABS Evening News on uh, this Sunday. Of course, in our top story tonight, uh, the family of the Parham woman who was shot during a robbery at her superette on Friday tells ABS she is recovering. The son of Claudette Edwards, Craig James, tells ABS News she was shot once during the robbery, but she's doing well. She's all good, you know. She came home today after they had the hospital. So right now she's resting and recovering. Well, everybody is taking it comfortable because they realize that the situation was a life-threatening. So, you know, everybody kind of okay for now. James says the family has been operating for upwards of 20 years and this incident has forced them to put security measures in place. We're operating for over 20 years. You know, and you know, we never really experienced a situation like this before. But you know, no, you know, things have to be taken into a different perspective as to how we're going to deal with another situation like this. The regular things like cameras and you know, maybe even um, acquiring a, a licensed firearm and these kind of things or so. You know, because right now you got to be protective of yourself. James tells ABS News uh, the police are following a number of leads into the incident. On Friday, armed bandits made off with the shop's uh, cash register after shooting the owner. In another story here for us, motorists will see a reduction in fuel prices at the pumps this week. Prime Minister the Honourable Gaston Brown announced a reduction on his weekly radio program on Point FM on Saturday. He says the West Indies Oil Company advised him of the change in price the day before. The next shipment is likely to reduce by about 93 cents for gasoline and 46 cents for diesel. Mm -hmm. And the policy of the government is to transfer those um, savings to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. So effective Tuesday, there will be a reduction in diesel and gasoline prices. Was this evening, the police have charged 26-year-old Charger Joyce of Villa with attempted murder. Joyce, who turned himself into police over the weekend, is accused of attempting to murder several members of a household at Fort Road last Thursday. The accused allegedly armed himself with what is believed to be a sharp object, which he used to inflict multiple stab wounds to his victims. He is expected to make his first appearance before the court on Monday. And we learn here today that Prime Minister the Honourable Gaston Brown says T-shirt masks will be held in St. John's despite a release from the Creative Industries Ministry putting the event at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium. The Prime Instructions the were given that the carnival celebration should be in St. John's and that the suggested new route going up to the Sir Vivian Stadium should be scrapped. So... Whoever put out that um, press release know exactly what to do. And I want to remind that higher power, they're not higher than the cabinet. Uh, the Prime Minister is saying that Cabinet has already directed that all carnival events will take place in St. John's. He cautioned the ministry officials to adjust the schedule accordingly. Now, 10 young residents have successfully completed a six-month air traffic course in the United Kingdom. Eight of the newly trained specialists touched down at the VC Bell International Airport this afternoon. They say they're looking forward to putting their training to work. This group here, we're able to work together and tough it out, if you could say it like that. Just tough it out, 
and we're all successful because of that, that togetherness. And I think that particular trait is what's going to make us a lot more successful further on in our career. Honestly, it wasn't something I always wanted to do, but I'm glad I'm in the field now. For the first part, we did some classroom work, but like I said, majority of it was simulation, so we did actually control aircraft. Obviously, they were, weren't real. You know, they don't trust us that much yet, but you know, we did get to control aircraft and we learned the different separation standards and everything we need to do to be successful in the job. Air Traffic Services Operations Officer Eugene Silcott has congratulated the group for successfully completing the course. He says they will require further training before the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority certifies them. What is going to happen now, we're going to take them into like a six weeks classroom training where they have to learn the local procedures now. I've been training in England in a different environment, now we need to understand basically what we do here in Antigua. So we're going to have a six weeks training with them. When we finish with them, then we put them on to on the job training instructors. And they will be with that person for a year. And then they will go through the proficiency checks to get certified and rated as a controller. The other two controllers are scheduled to arrive on island at a later date. In another story, the o o AOSIS Fellowship has received a United Nations Small Island Developing States Partnership Award. The fellowship brings some of the youngest and brightest minds from AOSIS member territories to New York for a one-year attachment, providing them with real-life experience of the major challenges of environmentally, environmental diplomacy. Well, uh, AOSIS uh, Chair Ambassador Walton Webson accepted the award at the recent Global Multi-Stakeholder Small Island Developing States Partnership Dialogue at the Nation, United Nations headquarters. The award recognizes outstanding partnerships that support sustainable development priorities in small island nations, mainly on the, the pillars of environment, economic and social. Well, Italy's Ecological Transition Ministry played a vital role in launching the Fellowship Training Initiative and the Deputy Permanent Representative to the United Nations, Stefano Stefal, accepted the award for the Italian government. SID's Lighthouse Initiative won in the environmental category and World Bank Finance Programme. Unleashing uh, the Blue Economy of the Caribbean won the Economic Award. Ten fellows, including Antiguan Barbuda's Zachary Phillips, are enrolled in the fellowship program, which uh, lets them participate in negotiating several matters, including climate change. Ambassador Webson says the award adds valid validity to Small Islands' thrust to build future capacity for the mission of AOSIS as it continues to evolve. Now, as the country continues its push towards increased access to tertiary level education, one youth advocate is playing his part to make the dream a reality for at-risk youth in his community. Rakeem Aparicio reports on the I Believe in You scholarship. I go to the struggles, I have neighbors. I don't really like to watch your mom and your family um, sacrifice a lot for you. And I just like, hey, when I get older and I can do it, let me do it. I might not, I'm not the richest individual, I'm not the poorest, but what I can do, I can do to help people. Youth advocate Jamal Frederick says the I Believe in You scholarship will cover the tuition costs for two at-risk youth in the St. Paul's constituency to further their education. In the first instance, he says the scholarship will provide two deserving people with the opportunity to obtain a technical and vocational education and training or TVET certificate from the Antigua Barbuda Institute of Continuing Education or ABIS. It's a fully covered scholarship. Your processing fee will be paid. Once you're accepted, tuition will be covered. So the only thing you, you focus on is your education and gaining that um, qualification. The scholarship, he explains, will be for people ages 16 to 35. I'll be signing as the person responsible for you as your guardian. So I'll be able to track your progress, see where you are, and if you're lagging behind, he will have a conversation with you. Fleming Rental, he says, is the first sponsor to come on board. Plans are afoot to expand the scholarship to include the Antigua Barbuda Hospitality Training Institute next year. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. If you would like to apply for the scholarship when it officially launches later this year or become a sponsor, you're asked to call 776-1348. That number is on your screen, 776-1348. 
Now, the medical benefits of fun walk returned on Sunday after a hiatus caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Jessica Russell was there for us. All right, we'll get back to that story in a moment. Uh, but MP for St. Peter, the Honorable Asset Michael, insists he will contest the upcoming general elections. ABS News caught up with Michael in Parham earlier today on what he calls his usual house-to-house -house campaign. I'm running, of course I'm running for St. Peter to represent him for fifth term. What ticket? I'm running on Asset Michael's ticket. I mean, I'm sure you'll be aware that the Prime Minister says I'm not running on the Labour Party, but we will see how that unfolds. Of course there's a possibility I'll be running independent, especially the Prime Minister has ex-Cathedra declared that I'm not running on his ticket. At last Sunday's Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party's convention, the body ratified several proposed amendments to the party's constitution, including giving the central executive the discretion to select election using a method other than a primary. It also accepted a, a report from the Suitability Committee, which determined the incumbent St. Peter MP was not suitable to run on the party's ticket at the next election. But Michael thinks differently. The people understand that Asset Michael have always been there for them for the last 18 years and will continue to show strong leadership representation for them. So the feedback has been extremely positive and welcome nearly to every single home that I've been to. But Asset Michael shall be running in the upcoming general election and Asset Michael will win his seat resoundingly. The people of St. Peter are not stupid. All right, we come to the end of our local segment on this Sunday night uh, here on the ABS Evening News. Jack Matthew, he's standing by with the latest in sports. Jack? Uh, we're keeping track of the World Track and Field Championships in Oregon, where Joella Lloyd misses out, and a title for the Blackhawks in local cricket. The details coming up.